paars op groen, roze op geel. Hey guys, welcome back to the Syrian vlogging cave with the famous Dutch cow on the wall in the south of France. Uh, episode 8 already, time is flying. Uh, if you are new to this channel, we are a family of three and we would love to set sail and with these videos we take you along on our journey. Um, this episode is about small boat updates. Uh, we bought the boat. Uh, it was absolutely perfect, as you could see in the previous video, what, which was a tour of the boat. Uh, but there are always small things to do. So first on the list was the VHF. We bought a new one for the old boat, so we had to move that one to the new boat. On the other hand, there is a lot of space on the inside. So the is maybe better to stay on the outside. Installing was uh, more connecting and also the AIT 5000 connected perfectly and the whole set worked. Yay! So the second item on the list was the navigation software. There was an old Faruno uh, on board but that is quite manual and I heard of OpenCPN uh, and basically running Raspberry Pi and I thought that was a good idea. So I tried to make it work first. And what starts then to turn? Now, uh, in principle draait there the Raspberry Pi. Uh, hier zit een, um, een, uh, ja, een breadcrumb bordje met een uh, temperatuursensor en hier ligt ook nog een andere sensor. Uh, ik kom even niet aan de draden, want dan uh, gaat het gelijk fout. En hier staat een Arduino niks te doen. Toetsenbordje, muisje. Uh, en hier zie je de connectie knipperen met de uh, Nemea van de uh, AIT5000 van Digital Yacht die hier op het scherm alle AIS targets wegzet. Een zwaantje 7, een zwaantje 5, een zwaantje 6 en een zwaantje plus. Hier is nog een uh, target underway. De Elan, cargo ship 8.4, speed over ground. Iveer, underway, passenger ship 96. Ja, ja echt, uh, ik vind het echt te gek. Ik vind het echt te gek. Hooray, succes! Like super cool if you actually make that work. And then find out like two days later that Navionics did an upgrade. So I toggled the switch and AIS data was just flowing in Navionics and now shows on the screen. So as I already had an iPad which I wanted to connect to the Raspberry Pi, um, that was basically sufficient for me. Uh, I have an iPhone on the pedestal, uh, steering pedestal, uh, which also relates to AIS data. So I guess that those two uh, uh, Apple devices will do just fine. Uh, they're old, but they're functioning. So uh, for now, that's good enough. So the whole Arduino project is a little bit in the in the in the fridge, as we say in Dutch. We had a lot of fun making it work, and that's what counts, right? Next up was the navigation light. Navigation light. You might wonder why is there no navigation light? Well, you might have noticed the boat is from Friesland, and uh, you can actually see it in the movie where we bought the boat. Uh, or you might have spotted the, the top of the mast um, and where they sailed, uh, basically they didn't go that far uh, and if they uh, went far, they normally sailed uh, and didn't use it during motor, apparently, because it wasn't there. So I figured it would be best to put it in front of the boat and not in the mast uh, because there was wiring going there already um, and it was not that difficult, right? So first thing was how to connect it to the step uh, where you can get on the boat in the front. Buying a navigation light isn't that difficult, but connecting it is a lot more difficult, especially as the piece of wood where I wanted to connect it to had a stainless tube uh, uh, right below it. So I needed to clear that tube and connect it to the piece of wood uh, in a good way. Um, I made a drawing and I basically figured there is only one way to do this nicely, uh, there are multiple ways probably, but I figured 3D printing would be the best way to do it. So the first thing I did is I made a model, which I was really like amazed that you can just make a model and then you have this thing which looks amazing, but then obviously you need to see how it works. Uh, and a good uh, colleague friend of mine, uh, Joffrey, uh, uh, actually has a 3D printer and he said, well, I can help you out. And uh, so I went to his place uh, to see how to connect, how to create the thing from the model. Uh, and that was like super amazing. Let me show you. 
Uh, ik heb net een, uh, een 3 d verhaal voor jou gekregen. En die 3 d verhaal hebben we niet verhaal, want die printer moet weten welke weg hij moet afleggen. Dus we hebben hem nu op de computer in een stukken ge 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 gezaagd. Kijk, dat kun je hier ah. zien. Ja. En dat zet ik nu op dit, uh, dit SD-kaartje. En dan, uh, dan gaan we die in de doen. Ik vind het een uh, goed plan. <laughs> dat is toch wel weer fijn. Oh, ja, oh, het bed beweegt natuurlijk en niet de, de printerkop. Ja. Oh, kijk nou. Je maakt hier zo'n robotje. En dit doet hij wel, doet hij dit? Ja, even checken. Als hij het nu bijvoorbeeld al heeft gedaan. So I, I was truly like, whoa, what's happening, man? It's like, it's just printing the thing. And I was like, super cool. Um, but it actually took about nine hours, which is like quite a long time, actually. Um, so I, I hang around for a bit. Uh, and I watched the printer and uh, uh, yeah, that was fun. But uh, yeah, I had to go home over it because uh, yeah, it simply took too long to, uh, to finish the piece. <laughs>
uh, low, too small and too low. Uh, so I made some changes uh, in the model and I sent the model to Joffrey again and the whole thing started all over again. <laughs> Big, big thank you, man. The second one fits like a glove and was perfect. So uh, really happy with the end result and a great way to make something uh, that needs to be precise and, uh, and fit really good. Um, next step was that we had a cable uh, to go through the hole. We had a cable connector, or at least we had the thing to make it go through the hole. Uh, we found out where we needed to put that thing uh, and then the only thing that remains to be done is drill some holes in the boat which is always a bit exciting in a way it's like mm, it's not not exciting in a positive but in a negative way I would say uh, but once you get started there's no way back so uh, that worked out uh, pretty well everything should be measured so let's do this <laughs> All right, going to drill the other two holes. Okay, so there it is. Locked in place. I would say perfect. Absolutely perfect. So having the cable through the hole, the only thing that we needed to do was connect the whole set together and see if it actually works. Okay, the master knob light, uh, navigational light that needs to go up front, needs to go under here and on top of that thing. So I cut some rubber uh, to put it on the sides and I also put a rubber one to put it underneath. So we should be ready to go with this entire setup. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is the moment. The navigation light needs to go all the way up there. Let's see if it fits. That is the nice thing about video. You can just install it like this. This is absolutely perfect. Really absolutely perfect. Exactly how it is supposed to be. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. Yep. Nice. That was the one we already had. And this is the new baby. Yes. So super happy with the end result and happy that we can now use the boat in daylight or by night and under sail or by motor, which I think is a convenient thing. 
Um, having the experience of drilling holes in the boat and seeing how nice and tidy it came out, I decided that I would also want to tidy up some of the connectors at the back of the boat um, and to put a cable clamp there as well. So without my dear friend Rob, this wouldn't have been possible. We're drilling in holes in the hull through it, not the hull, the, well, the place where we can put the cables through the boat. Uh, it's rubber, so you have to drill it with a sharp drill and water on top of it. This I didn't know. So my dear friends from Skenstrut, if you don't tell that, you drill in the bloody thing itself. So now I have a old fashioned Blue Seas Systems and it works like a charm, really good. So continuing with this little baby. Okay, we're gonna install this little baby in the boat, but uh, it's quite windy out there. Let me uh, show you. So with the cable clamp ready for action, uh, it was time to go outside and, uh, and connect it to the boat. properly um, and it was connected in one piece uh, which I actually was very happy with after it was finished because it wasn't only windy it was also quite cold all right well that worked it has to be said that it is windy as out there I think it's blowing 30 knots or something and it funnels right through the between the houses so really windy really cold but uh hey be stronger than your excuse right so ah, really <laughs> really cold uh really happy this worked so uh, let's uh let's continue and uh pull the wires back here so i can see if uh, all the marine equipment actually works that would be awesome first sandwich so cold i forgot to take a picture but as you can see it looks nice with the season upcoming and uh, having those uh, small upgrades done, uh, there was one thing I wanted to do and that was basically to clean the water tanks because uh, I noticed that there was a water filter and I figured it wouldn't, couldn't hurt to just look into the tanks. Uh, but there, there was a little surprise, I guess. After loosening 24 bolts, uh, this was what showed goop. And after cleaning the goop, what remained was the hull, and there it showed corrosion, creating the goop. And this was actually quite deep. So having the small boat upgrades done, the big boat upgrade uh, was upcoming, because this was not to be left as, was, as it was. Uh, we contacted the seller, he agreed that this was not as it was supposed to be. Uh, and he agreed to uh, to fix it for us uh, and the only thing we had to do is go with the boat to uh, Snake uh, where we would be hauled out and uh, and he would actually fix the uh, the damage or the, the the yeah basically the corrosion the corroded parts I will show you in the next episode on that episode 9 uh, big boat upgrades and uh, I hope you liked this episode. Um, don't hesitate to leave a thumbs up if you did. Uh, leave a comment if you have any comments. And uh, yeah, if you uh, are wondering if we are ever going to set sail, then just hit subscribe and uh, yeah, find out with us because we also don't know. We're really planning for it, um, but you never know what life uh, has for you. And uh, COVID, I think, shows. So most important, stay safe. Um, and I hope to see you with the next episode on the first big boat upgrades. We need to cut a hole in the boat.